Hello, USF Clubs, and welcome back to the second national webinar of the year. My name is Julia DeCouts, and I'm the Campus Initiative Fellow here at the US Fund for UNICEF. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Allie, and I am the High School Program Engagement Fellow here at the US Fund for UNICEF. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura, and I am the manager of the Youth Engagement Programs here at the US Fund for UNICEF. Welcome back to our second webinar. Yay. <laughs> So, um, so Laura's going to give us some reminders on yeah. just the ins and out of YouTube to help us get started. Amazing. So, so as everybody know, this is YouTube, super easy. All you have to do is subscribe to our channel so that you can get alerts every time we post the video and we will continue to post more videos. If you have any questions throughout the whole webinar and especially at the end, this is a time for you to ask all those questions. Post them on the comment below. We will be reading the comments and answering all of your questions as time goes by. Um, be a little patient with us because there is a slight delay, but post the questions, we will read them and we will answer all the questions. And then additionally to that, um, if you like this video, hit the like button. We'd like to see what you want us to do. And also comment below if you want us to do something different or if you guys have ideas of videos or things that we should be doing better. Uh, we're right now gonna be sharing our screen so that we can share with you guys just a couple of seconds of minutes of PowerPoint presentation, and then we will hit off a whole lot of fun learnings today. Fantastic. So as you all may know, November's suggested theme is, is children's rights for our UNICEF clubs. We hope to take this time during each of our bi-monthly national clubs webinars to discuss the upcoming month's themes. So to help you plan for November, the goals of this session are really to discuss children's rights, to talk about how UNICEF works to protect them and how to take action during November around UNICEF's work to protect children's rights. At the end of the presentation, we'll close with a few club related reminders and answer any questions that you may have. So this should all be a reminder for everyone, but it's really important for the sake of today's webinar. And here we have on the screen UNICEF's mandate and mission, which is to advocate for the protection of children's rights, to help meet their basic needs, and to expand their opportunities to reach their full potential. And what we're really going to focus on today are children's rights and what UNICEF is doing to help protect them. So what are human rights? In order to talk about children's rights, we really need to discuss that what are our rights as humans overall. Human rights are defined as standards that recognize and protect the dignity of all human beings. Human rights govern how individuals live in society and with each other, as well as their relationship with governments and the obligations that governments have towards them. Human rights are inherent. We are simply born with them and they belong to each of us as a result of our common humanity. Human rights are not owned by select people or given as a gift. They are inalienable. Individuals cannot give them up and they cannot be taken away, even if governments do not recognize or protect them. They are universal. They are held by all people everywhere, regardless of age, sex, race, religion, nationality, income level, or any other status or condition in life. Human rights belong to each and every one of us equally. Yes, and human rights are also equal, indivisible, interrelated, and interdependent. So what do we mean by that? All rights are equal and no right is superior to any other. Human rights are also indivisible and interrelated with a focus on the individual and the community as a whole. So rights cannot be treated in distinct categories because the enjoyment of one right is actually usually dependent on the fulfillment of other rights. However, so for example, take healthcare. Being healthy, of course, and having access to quality care is a human right. However, when someone is being denied their right to have a healthy life, that can keep an individual from being able to attend school and therefore affect their right to education. So this is why it's so important. Different rights should not be considered in isolation. 
at the end of the day, the rights we have as humans ensure that our needs are met. So when we talk about UNICEF work around children's rights, we need to talk about the Convention on the Rights of the Child. So as you can see here, the CRC was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1989. It's actually the world's most widely accepted human rights treaty, and every nation has ratified the CRC, except one, interestingly enough, the United States. The Convention on the Rights of the Child lays out a comprehensive set of rights for children. So by that we mean anyone under the age of 18, and recognizes the essential role and importance of parents and families. This treaty provides a framework to help governments ensure that children and families have certain rights and protections, such as children should be free from discrimination, government policy should be based on the best interest of the child, and children should survive and develop to their full potential. Children's views and perspectives are important. So remember, UNICEF is mandated to carry out the rights outlined here in the CRC. So let's talk a little bit about the difference that the CRC makes for children around the world. Clearly, the CRC cannot be a sole solution to all problems facing children. Even after 20 years of the CRC, too many children around the world still cannot go to school, still face ex exploitation and sexual abuse, still lack access to basic health services. But because nearly every nation ratified the CRC, the convention gives international and local organizations a powerful tool to say to governments, are you really doing the best you can do for your children? And that has helped make the world a better place for children. For example, in Niger, which has the highest incident of child marriage in the world, local organizations use the ratification of the CRC to help convince tribal leaders to speak out against this harmful traditional practice, with the result that hundreds of communities have agreed to stop the practice. And also in India, where free elementary education was instituted universal, that was a response also to the ratification of the CRC. So there's 52 different articles there's 52 different articles in the CRC, and we've highlighted three on the screen um, as examples. For example, Article 2, the convention applies to everyone, whether whatever their race, religion, abilities, whatever they think or say, or whatever type of family they come from. Article 22, children who come into a country as refugees should have the same rights as children who are born in that country. For Article 31, children have the right to relax, play, and to join in a wide range of leisure activities. So as a reminder, UNICEF works in 190 countries in the seven key areas seen here on the screen to protect children's rights. You guys know this because you're all part of UNICEF clubs. Each of these areas, UNICEF approach is holistic and rights-based. The goal is sustainability and keeping the best interest of the child at the center of all activities at all times. For example, we're currently, as you guys have probably seen in the news, um, our UNICEF is estimating that 6 million children are in the path of a storm that will be hitting Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. UNICEF has activated disaster response plan to ensure rapid life-saving action for children and families as we prepare for this emergency. This is one of UNICEF's key areas of activation, and the main focus is to preparedness for response to save lives and protect rights as defining the core commitments for children in humanitarian action. Basically, UNICEF is first, uh, first priority in humanitarian action will be to support effective preparedness and responses. And it will assess the situation in the first 24, 48, and 72 hours and be able to provide the most up-to-date information on what is needed and how UNICEF can help in the area. We will later show you different sites for you to get involved, but there's three easy ways for you to get involved through the emergency. One is to stay up-to-date 
The other one is to host the fundraiser and donate, and we will show all that to you later in the webinar. So, with those seven key areas, how does UNICEF help protect the rights of children? On the screen, you can see just a few of the many examples of how UNICEF works in protecting children. To highlight a few examples, um, dehydration and acute diarrhea can take a child's life within hours. Robbing young bodies of vital liquids, diarrhea kills 2 million children under 5 every year. Oral dehydration salts, which you can see on the screen on the top right hand side, can reverse the deadly loss of essential fluids and prevent many of these needless deaths. A simple solution of salt and minerals, oral dehydration salts, act quickly and can be administered by anyone. Just add to clean water and drink. And this is just like one example of how UNICEF works to protect children's rights in nutrition and health. Another example is recognizing a child's right to safety and protection. UNICEF works on the ground to really support children on the move by providing them with warm winter clothes, shelter, education, safe spaces to play and be a child and more. There's many of those examples where we, um, many more examples that you can find on our website in different places. So let's talk about how you can now take action for children's rights. Recognizing that children have certain inalienable rights, what can you do to protect them as a global citizen and of course as a UNICEF club member? So first and foremost, it always starts with educating yourself about children's rights um, and UNICEF's work. We've actually listed some great resources that we really encourage you to look more into on the screen. Um, we have the UNICEF USA website, of course. Teach UNICEF has a lot of information about children's rights and the CRC. And then the childrenscampaign.org link that we've included focuses specifically on everything you need to know about the Convention on the Rights of the Child and is really helpful. And after you've done that and you've shared those great resources with your club, we encourage you to educate your community and your school. We've showed a couple of great examples that clubs have done in the past here on the screen. You can see on the left, um, we have a UNICEF high school club leader actually just giving an overview of UNICEF's work and children's rights to some younger aged um, students. And then in the middle, we have another UNICEF high school club leader who actually set up some meetings with her local community leaders, including some public official, officials, and talked about children's rights in the way that they relate to the sustainable development goals, because that you know, is what she's really passionate about. So there's a lot of different ways to get creative, um, and Julia's gonna talk a bit about some campus initiative actions. Yeah, so the third photo that you can see on the screen to the right is actually Rose, the world reporter at UNICEF at NYU. In this photo, she's presenting about that week's club's meeting theme, and that is hashtag putting children first. All right, so next you can use your voice. Um, so as youth, really, you are uniquely positioned to speak out on behalf of other youth around the world um, whose rights are in danger. Um, so with the power of social media and other online platforms, your message can really go a long way. Uh, we have here on the screen a couple of club members getting really creative um, to raise awareness about children's rights that matter to them. So on the left, this was a photo campaign um, done by a high school club where they focus on just depicting rights that children have, such as the right to justice and the right to shelter and to hope. And then the rest of these pictures here are actually a social media campaign uh, where students submitted photos saying which uh, rights mentioned in the CRC meant a lot of them and that they wanted people to know about and to protect. Um, of course, if you are of age, we really encourage you to use your voice by voting um, and being an active citizen. So at all levels and all elections, we really encourage you to vote, um, especially on the issues that matter most to you as a global citizen. Um, and lastly, you can use your voice by sharing your story with us and telling us about what matters to you. So we've listed the Share Your Story form on our website here. 
And we really encourage you to look at things that other students have contributed to those stories um, and share your own and what your club is up to. Awesome. And finally, as you have all come to know very well, you can organize and host an event at your school uh, through your club to raise awareness for children's rights issues and funds for UNICEF's work. And here are just a couple of cool examples on the screen. So first, you can organize and host a panel discussion with experts, whether it's experts from your school and professors or from your community on a specific topic that you're passionate about. The, one, the photo to the left is just an example from the Yale UNICEF Club who hosted a panel and really day-long event focusing specifically on the CRC and children's rights. You can also invite local representatives to an upcoming approved club event that you are hosting to highlight what you are doing to support UNICEF's work and to get the word out there. Or you could even theme an upcoming club meeting or event around a specific right or a topic of UNICEF's work that you are most passionate about. Just like last year's Syracuse Snowflake Ball that raised awareness and funds for UNICEF's work to protect the rights of children on the move. And that is a photo that you can see in the middle. That was just one of their amazing performers of the evening's event. And FYI, if you are in a city with a community engagement fellow, invite them to come and speak about UNICEF's work at your event as well. And finally, when you're hosting an event, make sure to get the event approved by visiting the friendly URL that you can see on the screen as well. Um, so that we can be in the know about your event and that we can help support you along the way. Awesome, everybody. Thank you all so much for uh, listening to us so far and that we know we just threw a lot of information to you, but that is okay because one, we will be posting all of these links on the description below and by the way, don't forget to like the video and subscribe below if you want to get the most up-to-date information on UNICEF clubs. So now really, we just want to open it up to you. We know that you guys have tons of questions. We receive them all the time. And we want to have an open conversation to list all the answers to those questions live, to help you guys it, through any process, and really talk about the different activations that you are planning all the way through October and November. So if you guys have any questions, please post them down below in the comments. We will be reading at them and, um, and replying them live right here for you. And I think uh, to start us off, to start us up with maybe a question that actually has not been posted on the comments, but we do get it on a, I would say, daily basis, <laughs> is can you give us ideas of fundraisers or events that we can post? Maybe Julie and Allie, you guys can take it off, one, one idea each, and we can all do one idea each. A type of fundraiser that they can post or host. Oh, got it. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Well, I mean, I think that when we're talking about planning for November, which is the goal of this webinar, and talking about children's rights, there's actually so many different ways that you can sort of get creative with recognizing children's rights in a way that you think will resonate with the students on your campus. So I think for high school clubs in particular, um, we've seen the power of photography and the power of social media and just spreading awareness, whether that's about a specific right, um, like the right to water or um, the right to shelter in the case of like the refugee and migrant crisis that that's happening. Those rights are extremely topical and the rights that children have as children, not as refugees and not as migrants, but as children. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can take this conversation. Um, but I really encourage you to look into the resources that we provided on this webinar and see what hits home for you. Um, and then we're always here to talk about it further if, if you need some ideas. Cool. One other idea that um, I was thinking off the top of my head that I've seen really successful on college campuses specifically are um, chalking campaigns. So what I mean by that is really, and it takes such little work uh, to implement and plan. 
So buying a couple of boxes of chalk and after discussing with your club what are the children's rights that really resonate with you and that you really want to activate around, start writing about them in chalk throughout your community. So writing the specific rights and, and ways that your community can raise awareness and activate just via chalk on, on sidewalks all throughout the community is a really quick and impactful way that you can activate your entire community, not just your students or your club members or club or community members that might be specifically attending a, an event. It gives you the opportunity to educate your entire community about it. So I think that's really impactful. It also creates really cool social media photos as well that you can use to highlight your club. Awesome. Yeah. And there's tons of more ideas on our website, on our club resources page. If you have not gone there, take the time to go to the club resource page because it's full of amazing resources that uh, have been created by us, but also by club leaders such as yourself and our national council members. So go check it out. Uh, and as I said before, if you have any questions, make sure to post them on the chat. We will literally answer any question that's appropriate, <laughs> and we will try to get you as much information as possible. Now, earlier, I mentioned that I was going to share with you guys, and I'll share my our screen again, um, where you can get more information about emergencies that are happening. And, oops, sorry. <laughs> and I'm going to open it right now. So the first place that I'm going to send you to is our UNICEF USA page. Uh, and right on the main page, you're going to find you're going to find the information of the current emergency that's happening, and it's going to link you to a page that has the most up-to-date plays. In here, we're going to it is continuously get updated. Uh, as you can see, it has a date and time, and you'll get videos and photos and comments. I highly recommend you guys to check out this page on a frequent basis. I can't say this enough. Follow us on social media. UNICEF USA posts amazing information on the emergencies but also information about anything that could, um, that would be relevant in terms of activations, et cetera. And just also a reminder, questions, post them on the comments, we will read them. Another great place to get information about what is happening in each country is UNICEF's page. Uh, it's called Country Program Documents. And in this page, you will literally find what UNICEF is doing in different languages in each country. Now remember, the four countries that will be uh, affected by this emergency will be Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. You can search these countries in the list, check out what's happening there, and learn more about the country so that you can better talk about the issue that is happening in, you, um, in the emergency. And the last part is, you know, we always say UNICEF is there before, during, and after an emergency. We have had presence in these countries for many years now. Each country has different level of presence, and we work in those countries on a regular basis. During an emergency, the activation will be different, and I already described it a little bit, but you can also learn what UNICEF is doing in each of those countries by uh, reading the 2015 annual report, which is the most active, the most up-to-date report. And you can find that again, UNICEF.org, country, regional, and divisional annual reports, and you can find them by country. A lot of really great information there. Take the moment to go through it and learn a lot more about it, which is the most important part. So we had a great question on our chat. If you have more questions, don't forget to post them below and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So my AP Spanish class is doing an AP with we. Is there anything specific that UNICEF is contributing to right now in Spanish speaking countries that we would be able to help raise money for? That is an excellent question. Thank you, Claudia, for submitting the question. So, yes, <laughs> the short answer. UNICEF is definitely working in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries, uh, and you can learn tons about it. Like I just showed you on the website, um, 
if you're working in a specific country, you can look at what UNICEF is doing in that country. Most, uh, it, it varies very different by country on what UNICEF will be doing. So I highly recommend you to think about a subject or whether it is one of UNICEF's seven core program areas that you're passionate about. It could be child protection, it could be water and sanitation, it could be health. If you're passionate about any of those, go search that in, a, in the region, the Latin American region. Um, or if you're passionate a particular country, go search about what UNICEF is doing in that country. We are currently active in, in, in countries that speak Spanish and you can definitely fundraise to that specific um, to that specific country or region or, uh, or in general, just program area. If you guys have anything else to add to that? No, I, I love that idea. Um, and I think it's especially important if you do have a really passionate interest in a certain country or a certain region to definitely follow that passion and do your part to raise awareness about that because so, so often we hear UNICEF spokespeople from different countries around the world and they express their challenges um, for getting support in a country that might not be um, top of the media, right? So I definitely think it's really important and I encourage you to do it. It sounds like a cool project. Yeah, definitely. Something that I've heard countries do, uh, and Julia mentioned it a little bit, like the World Report or Country of the Month or something in which uh, a club will take on a country and learn lots about it. Like we said at the beginning, educating yourself is the number one thing that you can do because it's easy and it helps you educate others and advocate and makes life better <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. Um, so we have a really, really cool question. I'm looking down because we have our chat on our phones. I apologize, but we're paying attention to you. So ask your questions in the comments below so we can answer them all. And don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share with all your friends. Um, so Lydia asks a question, are there any petitions we can sign to support the CRC right now or similar rights campaigns? Great question. So the, all of the petitions um, and pieces of legislation that the U.S. Fund is currently supporting can be found on the Advocate page on the UNICEFUSA.org website. So that's a great way to take action for child rights in particular, uh, especially coming up in November if you want to plan something around those petitions and maybe do like a petition signing campaign at your school. I definitely encourage you and some fellow club leaders to take a look at that page and again see what interests you and what you think will interest you know, your community or your school community um, and go from there. Yeah. Could we maybe pull up the page to show them? Yeah. Of course, that is an excellent. Oh, let me see. I'm pulling up the page right now. Actually, if you just go to the UNICEF page, mm -hmm. our supporters. So there's there's several ways that you can go. Um, my favorite way is to first start by going to volunteer because then you can get yourself acquainted with what is the most up-to-date information on how to volunteer. Um, and you can also learn what is the action of the month. Mm -hmm. And in here, there is a advocate area and you can just press and learn more. Mm -hmm. And in this page, you can look at all of our current petitions um, that are active that you can sign and you can learn more about them. Absolutely, so the CRC is one of those. There's also you know, a child trafficking um, letter that you can support, um, lots of different actions, that uh, Reach Every Mother and Child Act. Uh, definitely a lot of interesting information on here and a lot of variety too, so check it out. Hey, oh, sorry Julie. No, no. Oh. <laughs> and you can also be creative. Um, like we shared earlier, there are great ways in which clubs have in the past share their creativity and build advocacy programs or campaigns in their schools. For example, creating a, a photo campaign, a social media campaign. And if you are become, if you are doing something like that, tag our social media accounts 
we have an account for the high school club and an account for the Facebook for the campus club on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> and, um, and we really want you guys to follow us and interact with us. Ask us questions because we will answer them. It is a real person checking them and posting on them. So please post on them because we want to see them. And like I said, again, if you have any additional questions, make sure to post them in the comments below. We are checking the comments section on a constant basis uh, to answer all your questions. and. Thank you so much for hanging out with us because it's really cool to see you all here. So um, maybe in the time while we get, there is a slight delay on getting the information, so we apologize. But while we get more questions, um, do you guys want to share a little bit about the different ways in which clubs can um, organize a club meeting about the CRC? Yeah, definitely. So we talked about this a little bit. Um, I think the take action by educating is probably the most relatable when it comes to talking about this just at your club meetings. Something that we've seen done um, in the past that is really interesting um, is just doing activities by picking out uh, certain articles of like the Convention of the Rights of the Child, for example, um, and just having a really casual um, but interesting conversation among your club members about maybe five articles that you think are interesting and really relevant to what's happening in the world. Um, we've also seen activities done where you can actually hand out uh, the list of articles to everyone in your club um, and have people kind of select what they found surprising or they might have questions on or want to have a further discussion about. Um, so just taking the time to actually read through a convention, uh, you, know, you know, the world's most adopted human, human rights treaty and actually seeing what that looks like, um, I think you'll, you'll be surprised on how interesting it can be and the discussion that will arise from it. Um, and it might be different than what you would normally do during like a planning meeting or something. Um, so that's just an idea I have. Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily for a club meeting, but something just sparked my mind about our Teach UNICEF resources, because many of them for children's rights overall, but also specifically for the CRC, are children focused. So what's really unique and cool about it is that you can teach other children about children's rights, and they're broken off by age group. Um, and grade. So, you, so there are resources for elementary school students, middle school students, high school students, you name it. Um, and that's also a really cool and unique event that you can do in terms of education, educating your local schools and communities. So definitely check them out at teachunicef.org. Awesome. Um, another question that I think we get a lot and we are getting some is, when will I get my back to school kid? <laughs> Amazing question. That's the number one question this time of year. So to get your back to school kit, um, you will need to register your club first. Uh, so if you go to our website, whether you go to the campus page or the high school page, you'll see um, a button uh, that can lead you to our registration form. The requirements for registering your club, if you're a new club or if you're a returning club, it's the same. It's one advisor and at least four club leaders. Um, so you will go ahead and complete the registration form with all of your information, your club's information. And on the registration form, we'll ask you for your mailing address. And once your club is approved within seven to 10 business days, you will receive um, your back to school kit in the mail within four to six weeks of approval. So long story short, that's how you get your back to school kit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get that question at all. <laughs> um, awesome, well, I, this is my reminder of, guys, like the video if you want to see more content like this. Comment below telling us what you want to see. We want to hear from you. We want to understand what you need from us. The more that we know from you, the more that we can help provide it for you. Uh, and if you have any questions right now, comment them below. We will be answering them live. So I have another question, which was, how can we work, collaborate as high school clubs or college clubs in a city? With one another? With one another, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> How can we collaborate with one another? With who? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. So 
One way to do that, I would suggest, is to reach out to your national council member. Um, and that's just for if you're a high school student, that's high school at unicefclubs.org. Um, and if you're a college student, that's campus initiative at unicefclubs.org. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I would first and foremost reach out to them um, because they are also in your region um, or if they're not physically located in your region, they are supporting the clubs in your region. So they'll have a good idea of what clubs are active around you, whether that's clubs that have been around for years or brand new clubs um, and who might be interested in collaborating with you. We have seen really successful club events organized um, through communities where there's multiple schools and multiple clubs. It's a great way to raise awareness in your community and even um, encourage some other schools in your area to start a club if they don't have one by inviting some friends from other schools. Um, so I would say reach out to your national council member um, and later in a couple of months once we have like, the complete list of registered schools, um, since it still is back to school season, uh, we will also have club maps live on our website. Um, and those are interactive Google Maps where you can see the address of the school where UNICEF clubs are located near you. Um, and you can reach out to the school activities director um, from there. So we definitely encourage collaboration um, and we hope you do. Awesome. So I got two more questions. Um, the first one is, do you have any suggestions for activations around the current hurricane in the Caribbean, specifically Haiti? Thank you so much for that question. And uh, yes, we have several ways in which you can advocate and really you can activate. The first and foremost is for you to stay knowledgeable, educated, and up-to-date on the emergency and how it is affecting the different countries and then the current situation of the countries. An emergency will hit a country very differently depending on what is happening in the country, how prepared they are, and that's one of UNICEF's main roles prior to the emergency is working with local communities and the government to get them prepared and ready to respond to an emergency fast. So first of all, educating yourself about what's happening. We shared the links earlier, but we'll share them again uh, on, the, on the description. We'll post them later, and you can find where you can educate yourself. But really following our social media and staying up to date on the emergency. The second thing that you can do is host a fundraiser. The most efficient help that you can provide is by giving organizations that UNICEF, like UNICEF that you trust and that you know that their friends are gonna go to the right place, the freedom to do what they are best at, which is assessing the situation and providing the needs that are needed locally in the community. In some communities, that might mean water. In other communities, it might be child protection spaces. You know, each community will have different needs based on the emergency and Providing the critical funds that are needed to do that work is so important. And you can do any type of fundraiser. You can do a big sale. You can do an interactive, like kind of a dance-a-thon, marathon, et cetera, fundraiser. Really, there's hundreds of ideas. And you can check them out on social media. You can learn how other clubs have done them. Or you can actually go to our club page resource. Um, or you can see an event guide, which is actually really cool, has a lot of ideas that you can um, build upon to host a fundraiser. So highly encourage you to check them out. In addition to that, also uh, the club's calendar on our resources page. In the monthly themes, we are constantly updating those and adding additional ways to activate based on that theme throughout the year. So continue to check that out as well. And subscribe to it if you haven't. And subscribe to our YouTube page if you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and like us on social media. <laughs> like us, follow us. Anything else? <laughs> no. Okay. Favorite it. Favorite <laughs> everything. <laughs> and most importantly, let us know what you think about what we're doing and comment it below us. We love your feedback. We want to know what you guys need from us. And we want to answer all your questions and we want to provide you guys with everything that you need. Um, which brings me to another fun question. How can I get more stuff? Fill in the blank on the stuff. <laughs> T-shirts, pins, everything. Well, you get lots of supplies in your back to school kit. Um, so if your club 
hasn't registered yet. That's probably why you haven't gotten supplies for this year. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Or if you have received it, you know all the cool and exciting swag units of swag that we provided this year in the back to school kit. Beyond that, uh, we really encourage you to create your own personalized club resources. So whether that um, is posters that you guys hand make that's specific to your club or t-shirts that where you have the opportunity to really highlight your club on them and say, for example, like the Rutgers UNICEF club on it. Um, so we really encourage you to create your own resources specific to your club um, with the caveat that, of course, you get them approved by submitting them to volunteer at UNICEFUSA.org. And by doing so, we can also provide you with additional helpful logos and more resources um, and support in creating your own t-shirts or posters or any other kind of swag that you're creating custom for your club. Yeah, and um, if you are interested in making your own club materials, be it posters, t-shirts, whatever, um, you don't really know where to start, there is a UNICEF Club's brand book, um, which kind of just gives the basics of how to properly use our logo and design, um, and that can also be found on the club's resources page right there with the calendar and everything else we've been talking about. So, thank you guys. <laughs> um, subscribe, like the video, Comment with any questions that you guys have. We want to answer them. Also, any feedback that you guys have. If you guys want to see a specific video or have specific questions that you guys want us to answer and address, comment them below. We will follow it and we'll make sure to give you guys the answers to them. And then, um, just because I want to be conscious of everybody's time, we got one more question and it is, how do I update officer's information or member's information, how do I update contact information for my club in case there's been an officer transition after I registered my club? Great question. Um, so we definitely understand that you might transition leadership uh, sometime other than when you register your club. Um, totally acceptable and we're happy to support you in that. We just ask that you let us know um, and you provide the contact information of your new leaders um, and your most up-to-date advisor. It's really important. Uh, you can just email it to us at volunteer at unicefusa.org um, and we can just go in from our end, update your contact information so that from that time forward we can make sure that we're reaching out to the right people letting you know about cool opportunities and providing you support from there. So simple as that, your club will stay registered for that, that academic year as long as you've registered for that academic year um, and we can update it for you. Awesome. So in the interest of time, first of all, I want to say thank you guys and thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. Thank you for everything that you do every single day. Um, we will share our last screen um, that hopefully has everything that you need to know moving forward for your club, which is first of all saying thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot say thank you enough. Second, submit all your club donations via unicefusa.org slash club donate. Contact your national councils, the campus initiative at unicefclubs.org and high school at unicefclubs.org. And don't forget that our next national webinar is going to be December 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be on our calendar, so go subscribe to the calendar. And lastly, subscribe to this channel. Comment below any feedback that you want or a video that you want us to create, something that you feel would be useful that we should be thinking or doing. Comment it below and let us know if you like this. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. We hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank y'all for hanging out. And see you all later. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.